Grok AI has released Grok 2, and this is X's large language model, but is it any good for research? Let's find out, Elon Musk. So as you can see, this was released in August of this year, and apparently it was performing pretty well. Look at this, this is the ELO rating overall, and you can see it's only a little bit worse than ChatGPT, Gemini, and then ChatGPT, the latest model, the 4.0. So if we go to Chat Arena, you can see down here that actually at the moment, Gemini's at the top, I tested that in a recent video. All of these are then Gemini and ChatGPT, and then just here at number 10, joint 10, is Grok2. So I'm interested, is it any good for research? If you're paying for Twitter or X as now is no, can't say Twitter, X, sorry Elon Musk. Um, if you are paying for X, you've already got access to the advanced features of this, but if you are just using X for free, there's some things you can do, and I think it performs pretty well really, and this was my result. So. The first thing I wanted to know is, can it create a literature review? So here I just asked, create a literature review about transparent electrodes. And this is one thing I like about this is unlike other tools, it kind of um, really knows what you want and it goes and searches the web. If you click here, you get a list of relevant web pages, which I really like. So you can go through and see if the, uh, the uh, results are actually related to what you wanted to know about. And this is an actual post in X. That's a little bit different, a secret source compared to other large languages language models. Nonetheless, this is now what we end up with. We get a literature review on transparent electrodes. You go through and you can see the structure is pretty good. Carbon-based nanomaterials, metal nanowires, nanotrophs. I like all of this stuff, fabrication techniques. So it understands what I want from it. And the good thing about this is that here you can see I've got all of the different references that it's found. So Wikipedia, yeah, okay, not too bad. Wikipedia, Science Direct, getting much better. And then you can see it actually produces some um, proper text. So this one is a peer-reviewed um, document. We can click on it and go out and see what it had to say about the transparent electrodes and why it should be in our literature review. So overall, this is a great start and something that, uh, you know, is on par with a lot of other large language models. So well done, Grok, but it gets more interesting than that. The next thing I wanted to know is, can it find peer-reviewed papers that I'm interested in? New ones, relevant ones, and this is what it found. So I said, find me recent peer-reviewed literature in OPV devices. It knew what OPV stood for, which was great. And you can see here, I've got relevant web pages and they are all, well, I say all, they're all related, but they're not all sort of like, you know, really high quality references. This one is good. This one is just a, a check if it's peer reviewed. So this is just like how peer reviewed literature works, I think. So it didn't really do too well. And that's what I noticed when I was scanning through it. It really just gave me this one, which is good. It gave me that. If I go there and click, you can see it's a real reference and and, uh, you know, it is useful for me. It's from 2016, though, which is pretty old. But it is just a conference presentation. <laughs> Pretty rubbish. So um, here you can see, uh, yeah, it hasn't really done a great job at finding peer reviewed literature in OPV devices. It hasn't really understood the peer review thing. It's just sent me to a conference presentation. So, mm, okay, this is a little bit boring. Um, and yeah, that's where we ended up with that one. I thought maybe I'd try my luck at just asking a more broad general question. I asked, what are some recent advances in solar concentration energy generation? Ooh, that is a mouthful. <laughs> but here we can see, I've got this one, we got a post here, development of high efficiency and wide acceptance angle holographics. So this is good. I think what this is telling you is that if you use um, X a lot as a scientist, your post could end up in an answer, which I kind of like for finding scientists that are doing stuff in your area. So yeah, it, it has got like a little bit of something extra that other large language model tools don't have. But we also got these web pages. You can see that they uh, are good enough, but it wasn't something, you know, this one is a journal. This one is not. They're all just kind of like, well, this one's a journal. This one's not. This one's not. It kind of is just a little bit kind of um, unsure about exactly what I want. So I asked here as a follow-up, what about some peer-reviewed studies? And it found eight posts, which is pretty interesting. It found that one before. It found this one, which is great. So this is actually a peer-reviewed journal. We've got this one, which isn't, I don't think. But, uh, you know, it's done a little bit better with a little bit of guiding. And this is one thing I say to a lot of people when they get frustrated with large language models is I say, look, remember this is a conversation and direct it where it needs to go if you need to sort of like correct the large language model. That's perfectly okay as well. 
while. But here we go, here are some highlights from recent peer-reviewed studies on solar generation. So overall, it did an okay job, but I wouldn't use this as my go-to for finding literature or finding sort of like studies that I want to reference. It's good at finding those posts um, if you want to, you know, search X for a certain amount of information or new updates or conference presentations or whatever scientists have actually put up on their social media. But uh, yeah, I think there's other things that do something a bit better, but uh, I was impressed with what it could do next. All right, so if you are a user of X, you need premium to be able to do this. And I actually paid my hard earned internet money to Twitter, no X, Jesus Christ, so sorry, Elon Musk. Um, I paid it to X and uh, which means then you can upload stuff. So I uploaded a PDF and I actually forgot to give it any context or any prompt. I just uploaded it. But the one thing I liked about it was that it actually just then was like, okay, this document is from this and it tells me these things. And it just started uh, making an assumption about what I actually wanted to know. And I liked that. So key points, materials and methods, and we've got electrical and optical properties, structural integrity. So all of this is a nice breakdown of that paper without a single prompt which I really like and it's done a good job at just breaking it down as if I'm an absolute idiot so I really like that uh, you know it's got the bullet points it's got everything I need to know and then even the acknowledgements at the end which is uh, I guess an important part if you are reviewing the literature um, and yeah overall I think it's really great the problem is you do have to pay for this uh, service or this large language model if you uh, want to upload stuff. So if you don't really want to give Elon Musk more money, because it seems like he's got enough. I mean, when you become the richest man in the world, do you really need more money? I'd argue not. But if you do want access, you do have to pay 13 Australian dollars or whatever that, that is in your currency to access um, the uploading capability. But you can do other things if you pay for it. The one thing I love about other large language models is you can upload figures and it will tell you like what's in the figure. You can use it for creating your own peer reviewed papers or you can use it to kind of like understand other people's figures. So I want to know, has it got that same visual capability as other types of large language models. And uh, it says here, um, I just asked, what does this figure tell m <laughs> Oh, come on, you can tell it's getting towards the end of the year, can't you? Because, uh, oh, I'm giving away, I record these early. Oh no, you found me out. Um, but ultimately, what does this figure tell me? Um, and then I uploaded a figure with the caption, and uh, I was pretty you know, nice, I gave it the caption. And here you can see it says, the figure you, pr you provided appears to be a set of scanning electron microscopes and AFM height and current maps of silver. And so it knows exactly what it is with the text. I'm not sure if it's getting that information from the text, but I did a little um, example after this, stay around for that. But um, ultimately it's like, here's a breakdown of what each of the part of the figure indicates. SEM image, SEM image, and AFM height map, AFM current map, AFM height map. Uh, yeah, so it got everything. And then it said the difference of height and the current scale suggests the addition, blah, blah, alters both the surface to topology and electrical performance. So it did a good enough jobs. And then uh, I want jobs. Come on now, Stapes. This is what I actually wanted to know is what are some conclusions from this that I can put in my peer reviewed paper. And uh, I think it did a pretty good job at just sort of like highlighting the talking points that I could use. So enhanced electrical conductivity. Yes. Modification of network morphology. Yes. Surface roughness. Yes. Potential of application. Yes. Scalability and manufacturing future. So it has done a really great job at just kind of like giving me things to start with if I wanted to talk about this figure in a paper like that. Well done, Elon Musk. So we know it can handle one image, but how many images can it handle? For example, if you're writing a peer reviewed paper and you want to sort of like upload all of your figures, I love writing peer reviewed papers that way. I'm very visual, I'm a very visual person. But here I've asked, these are figures from a paper that I'm writing. Can you suggest a story structure that would be suitable for peer review publication? And the thing is, is I noticed that you could only upload four images, which for um, uh, papers in my field is no good. We normally have sort of like five, six, seven, eight plus some 
sometimes. So here I just uploaded four to see if it could actually sort of like weave together a nice, uh, nice science story that would be suitable for uh, rejection by an editor. <laughs> so here we've got for a peer-reviewed publication in Scientific Journal, you should follow a structured format that involves. Okay, yeah, and I'm like, oh no, it's just giving me like the outline of a particular, you know, journal, a typical journal, and that's not really what I wanted it to do. And then it says specific to your figures. Okay, we're getting to why I actually uploaded the figures. I didn't really understand this bit and what it's done. So I just said, what order should the figures be in? And what are the simple conclusions from each figure? And this is where that little prompt, that little push in the right direction sort of really paid dividends. Because here I've got figure A, introduction of materials, figure B, material application on substrate, assembly process. I'm not sure that those are all there because, you know, we've run out of figures now. I don't know why it's gone into these details. It hasn't really understood the brief, but it does give me an idea of the story that I could tell if I wanted, you know, to first of all talk about the introduction of the materials and then application to substrate. All of this really is in that first figure, but nonetheless, you know, if we can say, yes, it's done a good enough job, I understand what it's trying to tell me. Then we've got microscopic analysis, and then we've got a final device or device structure, optical properties, electrical properties, and then everything else. So um, overall, you know, it did a pretty good job and then a general structure for the paper. Um, and yeah, so if you've got Grok, it does a good enough job if you want it to kind of like create a structure for a literature review, if you want to ask it a question about PDFs, if you want it to analyze one figure. Um, overall, I think that's what I would use it for. I'd still lean heavily towards either specific AI tools or be using ChatGPT, Perplexity, um, or Claude from Anthropic. I think those are doing a better job at the moment for academia than this one. But like I said, if you're paying for it and it's there, it's I think it does a good enough job. So feel free to play about with in your field and let me know what you think. I, I pointed down to the comments then. You know, don't, you, you get it. If you like this video, check out this one where I talk about four game-changing AI tools that are awesome for research. I think you'll love it.